Alright, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of the return to the SWF. We are here in April, and it's time to get the... I was gonna say something underway, but I, there's nothing to get underway. I got I got stuff to talk about before the actual episode, and that is, first things first, TCW held Battleground, and in <laughs> Battleground 2020 will forever be known in infamy as TCW Battle Cringe. I looked at that show. It got like an 82. And the fucking main event was Jake Horde, Tana the Mighty, Troy Tornado, and Greg Gage defeating Sammy Bach, One Man Army, Dazzling Dave Diamond, and Danny Fonzarelli. That was the main event. For any of you people still on the TCW bandwagon, you better hop off because we all know it's just total cuck wrestling. The TCW incels, the tin cells, are are screaming in, in the and punching the air right now, dude. That legitimately, I took a screenshot of it. Here it is. Um, legitimately, one of the stupidest looking fucking pay-per-views I've ever seen in the AI book and it's just so fucking funny that happens in this save new month that also means we have a new area battle and we win again because we're fucking awesome um Steve Freely's really helping us out now <laughs> for those of you that missed the last episode we stole Steve Freely fuck USPW they stole my life so we won the area battle and now our popularity is at an 82 um, so that's good, but it also means all of our weekly shows have to hit 82, and while that kinda has been happening, um, except for this one week where I thought Oliver Cobb could handle the main event match, we've done that. Uh, you know, a couple 83s, that's a little close, but we've done that for the most part, but that's, it's still, it's still kinda nerve-wracking. Every time that number changes, I get a little nervous, cause I feel like I have to hit that number, or better. Um, Quatcher Ball's contract in, um, RAPW is up, and Jerry Eisen will not let me re-sign him. Um, so yeah, his contract's up, and Clubber Ball's got, like, a year and two months left, so if he can develop his charisma and I can re-sign him, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do a fucking Clubber Ball solo run. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that'd be fucking funny, but... Other than that, that's all I have to talk about before we get into this edition of The Supreme TV. So, let's just get into it. And we open the show with our boy Steve Freely, our newly signed Steve Freely, cutting uh, just kind of, you know, he's going to be a baby face. So, he's cutting a baby face. Fucking goddamn, it feels good to be Supreme promo because he's a homer. He's, he's like, I left. There was some, there was some creative, dis oh shit, maybe we shouldn't say creative decisions. There were some battles between me and upper management, and it led to my departure with the company. However, the road that was filled with potholes, littered with spikes and all that shit, has been cleaned up, filled out, smooth sailing. We've patched up all of the problems, and I'm more than happy to be back with the SWF, and then, um, of course, he's interrupted by who else but Adam Smasher, and Adam Smasher says, four years, I've been holding this company together, I am the glue, you can call me Elmer, I'm, I have been holding this company together, and you, you left, you a abandoned us for four or five, I'm bad at math and, and time, years, and you think you can just come back and ruin it all, ruin all my progress, this return stever is going to be a very short-lived one because in the main event tonight, I already got it approved by our boss, which you love so much, I'm going to end you one week after your return, buddy. And Steve is like, dude, I do not remember this from when I left. What the hell? Um, 
Adam, Adam, is it? Um, I look forward to the challenge. He offers his hand, and I'm like, ah! And he thinks he's, like, trying to break his wrist or poison him or something, and he, and he retreats, and Steve is just fucking dumbfounded by that. 95, because there's my two boys. And we open the show with the big Des David's return match. Oh, I forgot to run down the card. Oh, well. Um, this was... I can't rem... Oh, I just fucking saw it. Dude, no! No! No, they're an awkward pairing. No! Oh, man, that's so upsetting. Oh, I didn't even think to test it. Oh, man. I'm gonna have to run with it for a few months. Because I, I can't just drop it immediately. Shit. Um, but yeah, so Squeaky McLean's big client, S. Davids, was revealed last week. And they took out Finn Bruiser. Never li really let that match go underhand. So I think it was announced on... It's been, it's been like a week since I recorded that episode. Um, uh, let's just say it was announced on social media that the real return match will happen this week. And it's against Fro Shore. And the story of the match is that it's really even. And that's not Des Davids being weak. He's pulling out the stops. Fro Shore is just like kind of baller. <laughs> like he's low key kind of awesome. And um, yeah, no one really expected it. But Des Davids still wins cleanly. And it's just a really impressive match. And even afterwards, Squeaky McLean's like, that was something. <laughs> That was, I'll, I'll, you know what, credit where credit's due, Fro, good shit. Unfortunately, um, you are in the wrong place at the wrong time, because Des Davids is about to ruin your life, and he walks away, and Des Davids, boom, another quarterback sack, and he's just starting to beat him down and beat him down, until eventually Finn Bruiser runs out to make the save, and not only does he make the save, he makes the challenge for the world is watching, I think, yes, yes, the world is watching, um, Des Davids versus Finn Bruiser will be taking place, one-on-one -on -one match, um, that's unfortunate though, because I'm not going to be able to use Des Davids in a uh, high capacity for, uh, for a while, because of the manager thing, that's that's oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, obviously, I could just uh, you know cheese it and like not have him be his actual manager, um, but eh. <laughs> if I want if I want to tell the story, I gotta have him with the negative chemistry. So we're just gonna have to deal with it for a little bit until I can figure out what the fuck I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> um, so after that, we get a quick quick little thing where we see Hollywood Brett and Randy unleashed. Just talking, we can't hear anything. It's just a one minute angle. We see the two talking, conspiring. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows what's going on? Up next, we have pre booked last week is the big money makers, Brandon James and Spencer Spade versus the mainstream sensation, which will be a one time team because I did test this team out uh, previously. Um, if you remember, oh god, like f five episodes ago when I said I had dark matches I wanted to cut out. That was me testing out um, Hernandez and Parker as a team, James and Spade as a team, and Sammy and Bear as a team, just to make sure none of them had bad chemistry before I ran um, ran with them in the division. And Hernandez and Parker do have bad chemistry, really bad chemistry, so this will be a one-time team. I was going to actually have them be an established team, because I don't really have any solo plans for either of them, but, you know... You win some, you lose some. So it's Big Money Makers versus the Mainstream Sensation. Uh, but right before the match, well, Team Sexy does what they do best, and that is beat down Robbie Retro. Beat down everybody backstage. Um, so Jimmy and Steven lost. It was Jimmy, Steven, and Robbie versus the Big Money Makers and Bear on week three. Um, yeah, okay. Um... And so they lose, thanks to cheating, but they come back next week, The um, Steven and Jimmy, they come back next week with, like, just, they took the loss on the chin and they won a rematch, and Brandon James is like, okay, just, like, gonna cheat again, 
And so clearly what's happened is Team Sexy's like, oh, so they're going to have Robbie Retro out at ringside to make sure none of that shit happens. Not on our watch. And they think they've got the upper hand. However, during the match, it is Dominic D'Souza who runs out and evens the odds. And for those of you that don't remember, when Joe Sexy first be re-debuted as a manager, his client was Dominic D'Souza, and then nothing happened with him. And it was really weird. It was like, why is Dominic... Where did he go? Is he not in Team Sexy? What the hell? Um, so yeah, Dominic comes in and screws over the big money makers and just <laughs> aligns himself with Jimmy and Steven, costing the big money makers the match. And they are furious. They're like, you're cheaters. You're a bunch of scammers. You're con artists. We want our rematch. The rubber match at the pay-per-view, a 4v4. You three and your stupid afro white chocolate friend, Robbie Retro, versus us and Team Sexy. 4v4, winner take all. <laughs> oh, I hit return to booking screen. Fuck. I'm going to turn in babyface next week to give it another week of build. Uh, so, world is watching. Big 4v4 for the pay-per-view. And yeah, Dominic D'Souza aligning himself with the baby faces. Maybe we'll hear more uh, next week. 76 for that. Uh, following that, we have a meeting between Eric Eisen and Froshore, where Eric is like, I agree with everything Squeaky McLean just said. And that is not something I have said. I have thought even once since that man has returned on our television. But I'm very impressed, Froshore. You came in. Kinda as a tomato can, I'll be honest, I'm sorry. You came in as a tomato can, and you held your own against one of the SWF's top guys. That's the kind of guts and talent that I want on this roster. So effective immediately, if you will sign this contract, you will be an official member, full-time, of the SWF. And Fro Shore, of course, signs and says thank you, and then shakes his head and watches the Fro frizzle or whatever. Uh, so yeah, Froshore, full t- he's hashtag supreme, guys. Froshore is hashtag supreme. Uh, we cut backstage where Adam Smasher is just fucking losing his shit. He's like, I can't, I can't do it all myself, guys. I can't do it all myself. I got this briefcase. That's really helping my cause here. It's really helping me save the company. That's a good asset. What are bad assets? Are Steven Freely, Rogue, and Lenny Brown. They're all... Forming something, I think. I think they're going to work together. I don't know. Maybe they're conspiring against me. I can't do it all myself, Kristen. I can't do it all myself. I... Okay. Avalanche and Chill, they got to pull their fucking weight for once. Because if they lose their next match against Lenny Brown and Rogue, we're fucked. The fucking company's fucked. I can't do this all myself. And Kristen's just sitting there stone-faced like... Yeah, she doesn't know how to react. She's scared that if she reacts the wrong way, he'll fucking rip her head off and then uh, play volleyball with it. So, up next is Lenny Brown and Rogue versus Domination. This was also pre-booked on social media after Domination and Adams... After the whole power plant um, beat down Rogue really bad, he comes out with taped ribs and... However, that is not enough for uh, of a disadvantage, I should say. That is not enough of a disadvantage for the duo of Lenny Brown and Rogue to lose to Domination, who are gaining a lot of popularity just by being involved with Adam. Um, so they're they're actually solid mid carters, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let's see where they are right now. They have yeah okay. Chill went from 35 to like. I'll, I'll say like a good 40, 47, 48 average. And Avalanche. Avalanche is in the 60s, dude. 49 to 60s. That is, that's is that's some that's good, dude. We actually have like a solid team to, that has been built up thanks to Adam Smasher. Adam Smasher, guys, if my save hasn't told you already, Adam Smasher is the best asset in this whole fucking company. <laughs> like, holy shit. Um, 82 for this match. And yeah, Lenny Brown and Rogue win despite the disadvantage. And following that, Adam Smasher comes out. I'm not going to do a full Adam Smasher promo. He's just like, two weeks ago, Rogue, you told me that you would not 
bit involved in a North American title match between Lenny Brown and myself. If I won, and I won, you better be a man of your word, even though you're staying on this earth, and you should be exterminated like the rat you are. Could you please be so kind as to not be a complete jackass for once? And Rogue is like... Oh, I fucking... This was the shit I hated doing. <laughs> just, It's just like a meta joke on like turning face. Like, fine, I'll be a man of my word. I will not get involved in your twos match at The World Is Watching, okay? Am Smasher, um, Smasher gets in the ring, joins Avalanche and Chill, and he's like, I don't believe you. And then fucking super kicks him or clotheslines him or something. Lenny Brown's like, what the fuck? And uh, Domination holds him back. Adam Smasher goes out to the ring, gets a kendo stick, and just wails on Rogue's abdomen multiple times, like 12 times until the kendo stick breaks and fucking lays out Rogue. I said last week that um, I, 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 used the, I used the line prematurely where I said, even though Rogue said he wouldn't get involved, now he can't. Now, now that's happening. Rogue is not going to be in any condition to uh, get involved until after the pay-per-view, probably. Maybe he'll make an appearance, but physically, he will not be able to help, as Adam Smasher has completely destroyed this poor man's abdomen. <laughs> All right. Um, so we have Adam versus Lenny for the North American title is official now. Yes, I know that everything to gain. Do you not understand what a money in the bank is, asshole? Um, following that, we cut to a extreme workout regimen by Remo. He's just bench pressing more than any human could physically hold. He squats probably as much as me. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I make I may I mm, I can't tell if Remo's the guy to skip leg day. I really can't tell. I feel like he might be. I feel like he just might be. Um, but yeah, he's doing some intense working out. In training for this triple threat match, which I think I've pre-booked. I have. Um, and we will gain a boost already. Sweet. Um, so, yeah, he's got Steve Freely, who has even, he hasn't wrestled in at least... What would it be? I don't know the exact month when Steve Freely, Rich Money, and, and Dawn left. But sometime in 2015. We'll just say five years. We'll cap it off. He hasn't wrestled Steve in five years. He probably hasn't seen him wrestle in five years. We don't watch USPW at this fucking company. Um, and the Crippler, who's just been an absolute menace since the start of the year. So, Remo is just... He's working out like he's never worked out before. Up next, we have a tag team match, which I believe was pre-booked last week. It's... Uh, Joey and ZWB versus Randy and Primus Allen, and despite the awesomeness not being at ringside and also kind of being busy in this build right now, which has caused Randy Unleashed to gain, um, what's the word? Fuck. Oh, no. Um, causing Randy Unleashed to call upon outside sources from Hollywood Brett Starr and Justin Sensitive. I'm sure you all could have predicted that's what their meeting was. If I would have ran down the card earlier. Um, so, yeah, Hollywood Brett his, runs in, uh, screws over uh, Joey Morgan, Justin Sensitive attacks ZWB, 83 for the match, and afterwards, Angry Gilmore runs out, uh, dual wielding bats, and just fucking <laughs> makes all the heels retreat. And the three baby faces challenge the three heels, not named Justin Sensitive to a 3v3 for the world is watching. So I think that should be all the matches pre-booked, if I'm not mistaken. No, we have one more. We have one more, and that's in our next angle, where last week, Scythe and John Greed burned a challenge into the mat. I can't remember exactly. It probably said, uh, like, Rocky and Valiant versus Scythe and Greed. The world is watching. They burned it into the mat when the lights turned out. And Valiant and Rocky, they come out and they say, um, oh, that was really neat what you did um unfortunately um we don't care and we will be accepting your challenge and we will beat you at the pay-per-view no matter uh no matter what you think's gonna happen we're gonna take you out and scythe and john greed appear on the titan tron they're just kind of like eh, <laughs> it's not gonna be that easy not gonna be that easy 
99 for the angle and then right before our main event we get an AEW style just kind of back to back to back um, match announcements for next week uh, Supreme TV we will see High Flying Hawaiian Akuma Marshall Dillon and Ranger take on Monty Trescard, Paul Huntington Huey Cannibal and Jefferson Stardust in a eight man tag team match we will see Joey Morgan uh, take on Primus Allen in a singles match and we will see ZWB and Angry Gilmore versus Randy and Brett Starr in the main event of next week's show. And yeah, seventy uh, yeah, uh, three matches announced for the next week's Supreme TV. Uh, and it is time for our main event: Steve Freely versus Adam Smasher. I don't really have any story thing thought of in my head. This was just kind of a test to see where Steve Freely is at in the ring currently because I, I haven't been able to play with him oh yucks i haven't been able to use him since like a week ago so yeah i thought best person to put him up against is adam smasher who gets a fucking 89 and so yeah i think steve freely just needs a little bit of momentum on his side but this will definitely help as steve freely defeats adam smasher in 22 18 uh clean finish his domination are not at ringside they're still hurting from earlier getting their asses kicked uh, but yeah, 79 for the main event. A little disappointing, however. Uh, following that, Adam Smasher gives Steve Freely a warning. Just kind of like hunched over like, I got too much on my plate right now, Stevers. I'll come back to you when my schedule's free. Just so you know, you haven't bested me for good. You've just bested me for now. Steve Freely's like, dude, that guy's fucking... Weird. And then Crippler runs in from behind, elbows him in the back of the head. Huge fucking brawl ensues between Steve Freely and the Crippler. 97 rated angle to end the show, and an 88 for the show altogether. Fuck yeah. Um, really good show. I still think my last week's show, I love that show. That was such a fun show to book. Um... But yeah, let's see if let's see if TCW can even like can even compete with an 88. Like 81, dude, their pay per view got an 81 or an 82. I can't remember. Who cares? It was TCW Battle Cringe, dude. Oh my god. Oh, I can't. I can't. What's better, Total Cuckold Wasteland or Total Cringe Wrestling? I, you know, what what do you guys think? Because TCW ain't shit, dude. Get this shit out of here. Get this shit. Oh, dude, we just got Doc Hammond again. They put Doc Hammond in the main event again. We just got Doc Hammond, guys. Unbelievable. Dude, it's like they're not even trying. Are the Phenomenals human asshole and mad hawking? That's not even funny. That's just sad. They did not strike gold. The only thing they struck was a fucking nerve in my back after seeing the Phenomenals. <sighs> On that somber note, that's going to do it for this episode of this, uh, the return to the SWF. I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you all come back for episode number 17.